Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, if they want questions to that. Yeah. So, so been doing this, like Coach said, for over 20 years. Uh, graduate of Colton High School, started coaching, went to the San Bernardino schools. Got a chance to come back to Colton, and it was fun. Then I retired because I got to that point where I didn't like the kids anymore. Coaching wasn't fun. So I retired for five years, didn't coach. Coach Strauss came on, said, I want to talk to you. And I said, no, that's fine. We'll talk, but I'm not coaching. I'm back. Five minutes with coach, and it's still playing the sink. I'm back on the field coaching. I love every minute, don't get me wrong, I was grateful. But I liked the kids again, we changed the philosophy of Colton High School where it was fun to coach. I didn't put any information in, up there because I'm computer illiterate, I don't have it. Uh, it's on the last slide. I don't have email or any of that stuff, I got a phone number. You want to get in contact me, contact coach and he'll pass it on to me. All right, this is a little bit more than we use, this is our blocking grid. So if we're gone, Coach has got all this other stuff we don't teach up here, so we're going to go back. Any, anything inside three and four in that middle grid is a trap block as far as we're concerned. It doesn't matter what Coach calls, how he calls it, our linemen listen to two things. They listen to the formation and they listen to the whole number, and that tells them what their assignment is. So if they hear four, they know we're trapping right. We're trapping right. So our We'll go to two first, that's easy. We're going here. Two trap. Our guard here makes a call. It's usually a long and short call, but the other teams finally got smart, so we go to a city and a state. Guard calls, it makes a city call. That means small, that means it's a short trap. He's going to go on to linebacker, and we're going to trap the first guy past the center. Okay, let me go that again. Short call or a city call, it's the same thing. We will trap the first man past the center. If he makes a state call, says California, New York, our kids get a little crazy. We try to you know, keep it small syllables so they understand. That means we're going to trap the second guy past the center. So now his rule goes back. He's down. He's going to release on the linebacker. We're going to trap here. And the running backs hear those calls. They hear a city or state. They know it's short. They know it's long. That's the only, about the only thing we teach inside on the run game. I'm not going to go over the pass game. I'm just going to go over run blocks right now. Now we come out. Oh, wait, it's good. I'll get back to that after I do all that. Come back to our pitch holes or our power holes. Pitch and power. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Pitch and power. Same block. Counter. Same block. All these. Pretty much the same block. If you come to our practice, you'll hear my hear we teach our kids. Don't listen to everything else. Six is a six. Four is a four. Five is a five. The blocking is the same. So if we're gonna run six, this is our we got a backup. I'm way ahead of myself. I am not used to this. Uh, our rules for blocking. DHS. Down, head up, second level. Real simple. That's our only rule. Down, head up, second left. So now we're going to go to our pitch block. Which is here. Right guard's got a down block, so he's going to block down. Tackle's got a down block. He's down. This is our hole we're running through, so we're not going to block him. We're going to release and go because fullback's going to kick him up. On pitch and power, fullback will click. The last guy on the defensive line, the six. Question on that. Yeah. So let's say like number four is a, de a defender. Yes. <coughs> and you're running pitch. Mm -hmm. Are you going to double team four, or is the right guard yeah. going to block down to the back? We're going to go here, here. If you're, I'm counting these guys the holes as people. We're okay. Go. Six two is what got my fault. Six two is what we're going to see here. Okay. Man on. No, that's what I'm saying. So let's say it's a, four, a forty or even a fifty. Like let's double team a head up. Double team head up. Okay, so double team does take precedence on the pitch. Yeah. And all double team takes precedence on the pitch, but our double team is our inside guy is a postman, right. outside guy is a crusher. Okay. And I'm gonna go over that way. I got carried away, confusing. But we're gonna double team down, <laughs> kick out. Center is always gonna block backside on the pitch of the power. Guard's going to pull up the hole, seal inside. We tell him, create the wall. We've got all three of these guys coming down. It makes a wall across. And I'll show you when I draw up a little bit more. Guard's going to come around and continue that wall. Tackle will come around and continue that wall also. So 
So now we've got a full-size wall. If the linebackers want to run around us, we'll let them because we're seven, eight yards downfield. We tell our kids, never chase. Never chase the linebacker. Let the linebacker come to you. Create the wall with no seams. Same for the other side. Down, down, guard and tackle will pull. Pitch is a pitch. Or as we say, five is a five, six is a six. Sweep blocking, we kind of went through that seven and eight. Same thing. Rules, down, head up, second level. You got a down block, you got to make it. That's a tackle and as a tight end. Guards are going to pull out, and we went through that a lot with Coach. Uh, coach. Yes, sir. Um, say you're running the, you're looking at the 50 look, and you're running the sweep, right tackle. Is he down to center, or is he down linebacker? Are you, when you're talking, you're down. Are you talking Not down one man over? Okay, no. He's going to double team. He's going to post so the tight end can come down on him. Because that guy's head up. He's got okay, down, head true, up, second level. Okay. So you got to head okay. up. So he's got to post him and take him. Now he's looking inside okay. for the linebacker okay. to come. And I'm going to go over with our bump block here when I get a couple of coaches up to help us out on our bump block so we can show how we come off our combos. So the center, center just covers for the pulling guard. The center blocks back. Or if he's got a man on, he's got to take him there. Take also. him down. All right. <clears throat> but what about a call if you Mama. get like a bare front where you get they're yeah. all three covered? Down, 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 down. Well, down, down, pole. Yeah, down, down, pole. Yeah. yeah, that's our rules. If if you have a down block, you have to make it. We tell our kids if you get in a situation where you're not sure, down block. You can never go around with a down block. You're not gonna you're not gonna get hurt with that. I go by it. I get past that. That's that's for Doc Ward anyway. Gotta get it too. SAB blocking. Severe angle blocking. Yes, we do. But our severe angle blocking is a lot more severe than what most people do. Explain that. The man, it's man and a half, really. We're, most, most severe angle blocking is just your man down. Coach, can I get you to come up here for a second, Coach? This is kind of a neat conversation to get those two going at. Yeah, I got Doc Ward and I have. <laughs> Go ahead. It's in it's friendly, here. It's in friendly fun. No, it's, 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 kind of, it's fun to listen to these guys. Okay. I'm here. This is a down block. It's a severe angle block for me. We're crowding the line. I'm down, head across. Okay, go ahead and step out, coach, for me. Stay there. No, no, I'm going to stay down there. That's a man and a half. That's still my block as a, as a tap. Still my block. I'm coming down here. Still getting him. He comes across. Blows up our pullers, it's his fault. So he's got to come flat, head down, punch through the hip. That's why we say, John, most severe angle blockers would not block him. It wouldn't be his responsibility. It's our responsibility in our scheme because we have nobody else to get him. This guy's not mine now. He's head up. I still have a down block. I've got to get to him. So we're a man and a half. That's how far we have to go. Yes, sir. Is that on sweep? No, that's on pitch, power, any any of your rule blocks. Down. Okay, but you're playing tackle, right? I'm playing tackle right okay, now. Okay, what's the guard doing? Pull him. If he's on, on power, sweep, though. On, we're on power. power. Okay. We got here, we got here. Nobody there. For him to down block, he's going to post head up so I can come down and sweep the hip just like we went through and press the hip. Just like we went through over there. All right. And then this guy becomes the tight ends man by himself. Oh, so you wouldn't double team in a 50 defense, straight up 50, you wouldn't double team the top. Oh, 50, 50 defense, yeah, because he's not, he's more than a man down. He's more oh, than two men down. Yeah. I'm yeah, saying he's, he's, he's playing, he's over the center there, now he's stepping in that gap. So he's okay. 60. He's stepping, he's stepping in that gap, and I've got to come down and dig. 6 2, you're going to double team the guard, yeah. with the guard, with the guard. tight ends by himself. Yes, tight ends by himself. So where they could fool you is put him a little further down and then have him slant. He snaps back, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, we, and we see it. That's why, if we're going to double team, that's why we're here. We're post. And he snaps okay. back. I come off and I got him because we got the double team. Now, why would you double team at the hole that you're not running at versus the hole you're running at? You get a down block at the, your six hole, but you're double teaming at back of the four hole. Because if we don't get this guy snaps across in the four hole, we're never going to get to that six hole. With the you got a double team with the wing back and the tight end. Or wing okay. back and tight end here. If we're, if, we're our double, if we're in our double team, we got tight end and we back double team, guard and tackle double team. Good. Yeah, it, I just had a problem with my tight end just couldn't block that down block and they, they blew that up. We got that double team inside. But. I'm going to show you how to do that so you can 
Yeah. Hopefully you can get because the smaller kids can block those big monsters. Yeah. 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 Influence blocking calls. I'm not going to go You guys want to hear? You guys want to see more of our double team and our combo blocks? I'm going to get away from that. Tag calls, I'll go over that one real quick. Tag calls are for a tackle. Anytime we're going to run sweep, we're going to run outside trap, uh, 38 sweep. Tackle, here's tag, he knows he's pulling out and around. It's automatic for him. He's going to step, let the tight end come down, go around and replace him and hook. It just gives us one more man outside. The, the fullback and the backs tag calls, I don't worry about. That's coach's deal. He tells them what to do on that. You tell them that, that <coughs> really they can make a tag call anytime they don't have a down block. Yeah, if you don't, let them go ahead and make their own call. If they yeah, want. they can make their own call at the line of scrimmage. That tackle sitting there, and he has no down block. He can just look at everybody and say, tag, tag, tag. I'm Shoot, I'll lead. I'll say, say you, me. They've got all sorts of they call. We, we're not real specific on what they're going to call. As long as they can communicate with the man next to them, we let them say whatever they want to. Thunder is a zone and stretch. I won't go. Double trap. Double trap, I talked a little bit earlier. We'll coach up here on what we're doing. Double trap. If we're running two hole, we don't usually do it. We'll go to four hole, it becomes long. So we're going to take onside guard. Tackle's going to automatically go to linebacker. Onside guards, one step, clear, trap the end. Offside guards, going to come and trap the tackle. Gives us that sweep look, causes the linebackers to flow out. We're getting the same look as the sweep, and now we're going to hand off to our two back. Our quarterback's going to keep it out of spin, and we're going to come up. You do much better drawing this stuff, so I'll get yeah. to that, and I'll draw it for you guys here in a minute. Line calls from the line of scrimmage. I already went over that a little bit. It's uh, states and cities for our trap blocks for long and short. Our tackle on our tight ends will make a me and a you call. Tight end thinks he can get that guy, we can get around, he's going to say, me, 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 our tackle no longer. He gives up his second block, his head up block, and gets around and helps out to the outside. Coach, at what yes, age can you start implementing some of those line calls? Our youth football program implements our line calls right now. Yeah. Eight, nine, ten. Mm -hmm. Because it's very simple. Sounds complex, and I, like I said, I don't do a real good job of up here communicating with it, because I do better when I'm drawing. I get it. Just, but, it, but they are, 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 I think right now, everywhere, especially, especially the midgets are running it, and I think, I think our 10, 10 year olds, 9 yeah. and 10s, or whatever age group it is, I think they're running it now. Smaller group isn't, but the other ones are. And we just went over that. This is other stuff. Okay, sweep. Go over the sweep with you a little bit. Coach went over a lot of this, but we're going to go over. Okay, top one's a 5 3. That's what we see a lot of out of our double wing. Rules are here. Tackle. Down block. No down block. He's got a head up. So he's going to post. Tight end's going to come down and sweep the hip. Now your tackle's looking off for linebacker. Wing's going to hook the end if he's playing there. If that end defensive end plays inside the wing, it's his block. He plays outside the wing. Wing comes on the linebacker. And we get that end with somebody else. Guards, both guards out and around, depending on where the corner's playing. If we can hook him, we want to hook. <coughs> if he plays outside or flies across, we'll kick him out. We shift the single wing usually. We're seeing most teams now because we quick snap. Yeah. Um, they used to be they'd wait for us to shift. Now we're going on first sound. Mm -hmm. So all they're doing is flexing with us. We're seeing the same out. defense. What's nice is we're finally starting to see them stay instead of changing defenses on us. A lot of you used to want to switch the whole defense whenever we shift, but now we're not. So we can still use the same block. Yeah, that makes sense. Center blocks on sweep. You always blocks play side, so you can do a cutoff block here. Tackle, you're going to punch. TDA, because we don't think this guy can catch us. Same thing with offside tight end. He's going to run underneath that linebacker and go TDA. And on your post, uh, he's he's only taking half that guy. Yeah, he's just standing. The guy up. on him, he's only going to take half. He's going to stand him up, the outside shoulder, stand him up, and let us crush your hip. Inside hand is. Yes. 
Uh, what's, what's he do with his inside hand? If he's the Val Buck or the, the post no, guy? he's the post guy. Post guy, he's just here looking. He's here. He's ready to go in case that lineback comes and fires. Because you got this guy posted up, you'd be surprised how easy it is here. Linebacker comes, you don't have to slide all the way off. You come right here and hit him right in the chest, right in the breastplate, and it's going to knock him off track. And then you can slide and get him. Out of the 6 2, doesn't change any for us, except for the center, he no longer has man on. But he's going to step hard, hard to play side, hard to play side. Guard's going to pull. Tackle has to come down now. He's got a down block because our guard's covered. So he's coming down. So now we're down, down, down. Hook. Everybody's out and around. Fullback's going to block backside for our other point guard, our offside guard. Sweep the other side, same thing. So our box, we do all this with coach. Okay, jack right, split right, brothers right. This is one of our favorite plays on the goal line, all right? We've got split, our brothers back here, and we've got lead. The only change we're going to make on this, everything else is the same on play side. Back side, because they're going to shift over with us, what they usually do. They put this wrecker in the A gap. Center's going to still block away on the linebacker. Our offside guard's going to stay home and have to cut that guy off. And he knows that. Once he sees somebody inside and we're playing sweep, he can't pull. He knows that's one of his rules. He can't pull out. Yeah, we have a left guard and left tackle over, too. There we go. We have a left guard and left tackle over, too. Mm -hmm. Go crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ruined spread. Coach went over the spread sweep. <clears throat> um, before we get into line shifts, I'll show you the, how we do this, how we do our man block. Your coach up here. Okay. <clears throat> Our down block. We're going to go. I went over with coach a little bit earlier on this. Uh, probably easier. Okay, step over this way. Coach. Okay, he's he's playing over the guard. I'm the tackle. What we teach our kids now. Some of you guys are. We teach face mask to the crotch just to make coach happy. But I don't teach that. I teach bite the dick, crush the hip. Okay? That's our rule. Bite the dick, crush the hip. Sorry, guys. So we're going to step down hard here. Face mask is right here. It's a short step. Short step, hand out. Now you're on the hip. Base of the hand, base of the hand on the hip. When that hip goes, he's gone. Can't do anything about it. He can't spin off you. This other hand's right here coming around, pushing that. He cannot spin off you because you got the hip. This is the down or up? This down one. This down one. There's a soft spot right there. Yeah, there's, I, I don't care how big, how strong you are. You come across, take the base of that hand and hit the hip. You lift this foot up, you're on your back. Coach, below below the belt on the hip or at the belt or? At the pinch point. Yeah. Right, right at the top of the edge. Top okay. edge of that hip. Oh, you don't both have, hit it right on the path. Iliac crest, right there, man. Is that what it's called? I don't know. It's Coach Dad, right? Because, show it Coach. Because you're here, you're stepping, your pressure is all on that first step, right? Get this hip, this hip goes where you're going. Where are you going with the body? You can step this and plant, and now you're dragging. You pick this up, you're gone. The reason we got out of you know, the chicken wing block, watch how easy it is for coach to spin off of me by chicken wing. No pressure. Now watch when I get his hip. <laughs> and that's 56 year old man doing that. It was an 18 year old kid that's benching 400 pounds and squatting 500 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of cool. And what we do to make this even better, now if we got a double team, mm -hmm. all right, he's head up on me, tap on the guard now. My first step is here, post him. Now look how high his hip is. Now we're going to crush his hip. I'm going to come off and I'm going to get linebacker. The question by coach earlier was, what happens Linebacker comes on this side because our down block's got his head inside. He can't see, right? So now what we're going to do, we're going to post. He's got hip. I look. I'm up. My hands are up. He comes around. Change hands. 
Bump him off, shove him, and his head comes up instantly. Catch a linebacker running through. Automatically tells yeah. the guy that the attacker's coming. Your okay. down block guy feels pressure. He gets off. He's bounced off. You got that? Where he hits it with the hip, and then the guy comes off with a scrape from back. Yep. That's... That's how your combo block is coming off, which is it's good stuff without actually knowing if he's going to come off or on. And one other thing, we can do one other block. Man on, no help. Everything's spread out. The way we teach, we come off. Hands here, because like I said, everything we do is hands. Thumbs under the shoulder pad, under the breastplate. Push, lock up, puts the shoulder pads under the chin. Now he's leaned back. He's yours, no matter what you do. Elbows in. He starts to separate. Release, you're no longer holding. As long as you got it here, you're legal. Not out here. Gotta be inside the frame. Thumbs up, and we're pushing. We practice it every day. Step, thumbs up underneath the shoulder pads. Push shoulder pads back into the chair. You're not actually grabbing the plate. You're not putting no. thumbs and grabbing that plate. And we're, putting, we're putting thumbs underneath the plate and pushing up. And then once we get up, we get the lean. Now we're locked and pulled it back into this. The fingers are bent. Yep. Yeah. Coach, are they teaching that at the youth levels as well? No. But not that we know of. Not yet. Well, no, it's, it's all elbows and fists. But yeah. when you get older, right. as they start to get smarter and start to slide off, that's what he's talking about. The reason we're taking a lot of the youth coaches are, are teaching you know, the double wing, the chicken wing, we call it. It's too easy to pull off of them. You can't get anything. <laughs> Yeah, right. No, I understand that. And I wish there were a way that I could do that because that makes a lot more sense to use your hands. But You can still coach at that level with your hands. But the challenge that I had last year when we even toyed with it was all we end up with is, you know, this a fight. Yeah. Is, you know, yeah. Yeah. No, we the key is everybody to punch through. I did that, that, through. I yeah. did that the key is my get, them to, get them to realize here your hands don't go any higher than that. Yeah. Hands, they lock right, your elbows and your hands. They lock. Elbows and lock. If they can get that concept. You'll you'll get away from this. Yeah, right. Once they start doing this, they know. Okay, recoil. Now you're right back where you're supposed and, to be. What we teach our kids, we're here. You come up past here. I think the, the key down. too is you have some of your one-on-one -on -one drills on. Yeah, I've got some on that other plate. We'll Watch the one-on-one -on -one drills. I think right. that makes a huge yeah. difference too. Yeah. What's the step on the good base block? Watch the man on man. Yeah. Wherever you're comfortable, what foot, foot I don't okay. teach. I don't teach either foot to lead with. Just like we don't teach what hand to go down. If you're, if you know you're blocking man on man, okay. you want to step to the right. You feel more comfortable. You want to step whatever you feel comfortable. What about on the post block? Post, yeah. post block. You got to step with the same, step with the same, same foot. You're going to post with. Yeah. If you're posting right hand, you've got to step here. So if they're by themselves, you give them the feet either leg. Yeah, either leg, either leg. By themselves, however they can handle that man to control leg. Okay. Right. So, no, it's half block. You're going at the guy, or you're going to actually take that first. We don't. Step we don't drop step. You we don't attack. Drop step. We attack. We'll attack. attack. Pass block for us. Attack. Same. Same deal. Thumbs underneath. Now, I mean, we're lifting hard, extended now. Okay. So we can't lock on. Now, step back. One punch, punch, and punch. But our first step is hard attack. Hard attack with the outside leg on pass block. Oh, get up in. Right. Get up in. How hard is it to reteach them once you get them? How hard is it to reteach them from the, the chicken wing? Our freshman team still teaches chicken wing. Do they? So it's not that hard. But it takes me. Because I always hear, you know, oh, you got to teach hands when you're going to get the high school and all like, yeah, our, yeah, that's our, our freshman team just changed two years ago because we changed coach. Our old time freshman coach has been with us for what eight years. He was a wing tee guy. Wing T guy, he taught chicken wing. He would not teach anything else. And so we would get them up, and after spring ball was over, they, they were using hands. Every once in a while, they fall back into it, but then you show them how easy it is to spin off. Now they're teaching. Now, yeah, they're, they're teaching now. They're trying to. Mm -hmm. It's right. tough because you learn it. I mean, it's, this is what it's like, you know, paddling a dog. You know, if you start learning it at eight years old and follow up, you're going to remember that. I'm going to copy this thing, would you? It's a problem. Now we're, now we're going to get into a little fun stuff before we run this, just to let you know why we did this. When we went from uh, all double wing all the time to double wing, single wing, we had to figure out how we could get our splits with our line, how we could get our movement. Our cadence is hit, set, go. So we were hit, set, go, snap the ball. When we went to single wing, it was hit, move, and we stepped over. 
six inch step and went back down. We were getting flagged for that every time we did it because we weren't moving every play, double wing and single wing. They were saying we were intentionally trying to draw the defense off sides. Yeah, we were. What difference does it make? So we had to come up with a shift that went all the time. So we went to the Dallas shift. We're in our double wing. It's hit. Well, come down and set. Set go. We're off. So now we can go hit, move, slide over, down, set go, and now we're fine. We're shifting every play. So shifting every play so they can't say we're intentionally trying to draw the defense offside. The other stuff you'll see on this is we're te this is a teaching session. Is we have fun with it. We run the click, we run the wave, <laughs> we run the shake. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, Chippendales. Uh, Chippendales. So they put their hands up here and they do this crap. And we do all this in the games. Hey, Coach, how many, how many percentage of the time do you think you got your wing on? <laughs> uh, you know what? What's nice is referees warn us, so we usually tell them, gosh, I don't know, it's. Uh, we're real close all We're the time. We're probably illegal, probably 50% of the time. But, but he warns us, and we get legal. And I'd usually tell him for you know four or five plays, make sure they're back, and then just go back doing what you were. Because they're going to forget about it. But, but yeah, we don't get flagged as much for it, unless the team really whines ahead of time. And then we have to really work and say, hey, you guys got to stay set. Number one, we're usually not set for a full second. Tell us to slow it down. And we tell them to slow it down, or we have back our wings up just a little bit because we're on the line of scrimmage. But this, this is going to be a teaching session on our shifts. With our kid, they had this, this is probably one of our better groups with our shifts. They just had a blast with it. And then, the, then there's a, probably a five minute session of actual game film and getting coachment, getting the kids to jump off sides while they're doing it. Are any of your youth teams doing their shifts? No. 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 Not that we, they, they, they look at us like we're, what's the matter with you guys? This isn't football. We, you know, they, our youth guys, They've been around forever, and they, they haven't quite figured out how to have fun yet, so that's our biggest thing. <laughs> okay. I do. I would love to, but at this point, I'd be fearful that a youth ref would flag me for it. <laughs> okay, we got, we got that. We get Mars calls, a lot of calls, calls from youth coaches. We don't know how to do it. And then other youth coaches. Yeah. 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 You won't let me get to the thing where I have to clip the crap through one. You might have to get the way that uh, you to put it the other way. Do you have a DVD in? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. You might have to just uh, pop it out and reload it. it, out. it out. <laughs> yeah. Where it automatically starts. Like... While, we run, while we run this, you'll hear me laugh because these are kids that have been doing it for two or three years and they screw it up. Just because the camera's on, they screw it up. They can't remember what they're doing. Do you work on this in, in the spring? I mean, all this stuff all year, you're, you're, all, year, all year long, all you guys year. are teaching these guys. Yeah, we have a session of this all year. And that's mostly of your of JV, fun. varsity guys. I mean, juniors and seniors, or some sophomores too. You'll get you'll get your hands on those guys. The freshmen is where you don't normally go. Fre freshmen right? we don't usually see till July, and we give those right to the freshman coaches unless we have a special kid. Uh, this is the first year we're starting early, so we can coach our freshmen uh, a little bit. They're going to be sophomores. We've only, since Coach and I have been together, we've only had one freshman kid that's played varsity. And that's yeah. it. So. And he, they're not usually linemen, so we, I don't get to work with them much at all. But I'll go down, once the freshman coaches start, I'll go down and spend a session with them and help them out and try to go over some of the things. Well, that's good that if you guys can get on the same feeder program, yeah. you know, from the freshman level up, that would be good. Kick on in just a second. So it just stalls there for a second. So I'm going to that out of the I did. This is just our, our base pop and call. Okay, now move call. Okay. Screw it up every time. You know when you then you get one that does it, everybody's got it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. When you do the pop so you can do the shit with their yes. flag. Yes. Flag. Yes. Get you about eight between five and eight flags a game usually from okay, here comes here comes our game. You actually hear this in the stadium during the game? Got it. <laughs> yeah. Kill them to do that. They click their heels together, I mean it just snaps. <laughs> yeah. 
best one is the wave, and the defense looks at him like, what? Right, back. Pure wins. Very line. Wow. Not a very big tight end on that left side, huh? Yeah. Yeah, this is the shake. The kid on the right side, the tight end, he is a freshman at BYU this year, started outside linebacker. Wow. Wow. <laughs> He's only like a freshman. He's a sophomore. This is our shake. Right? You gotta teach him how to dance. He's a boy dance, a boy dance. Yes. <laughs> Probably our best one. We get uh, ninety percent jumps on this one. <laughs> That's when you go into your single wing formation. Is yes. when you get the splits. Yes. And your double wings all zero splits. One more time. <laughs> You're getting ready to snap it, and you come up and yell at him. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, where'd he go? He's, he's at Long Beach City College yeah, right now. Yeah, him and our little running back. Him and him and our little mid yeah, running back. They're both yeah. Washington. He was he was the Bam was the kid that outran our running back. No, he didn't want to run anymore in the forty. And I told him we told him he didn't outrun the line when he played wingback and he couldn't do it. He split the foot. We came out to see him last year, coach. And the kicker kicked three kickoffs in a row through the uprights. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, I just didn't see that. Did I? <laughs> last year, no, this last season, he kicked one. These guys are a little bit more lazy about this. He kicked season. one over to the goalpost, and you know our track. Yeah. Over the track and into the trash can. Uh -huh. Into the big dumpster, and the whole, the whole team went crazy. They were like in the middle of practice. Coach, what are we doing? On this, on this film here, are you going to have some of this stuff we were going over? We're, we're doing combos and hand placement, any of that? I, I have, don't have that with me, but I do have it. I can send it out to you. I guess we're just yeah. raw footage yeah. like or It's all raw footage like this. I think he's got one-on-one -on -one raw footage. I have some one-on-one, -on -one, what we call our box drill on this. It's on right after this. All right, now we'll Yeah, i got to show PJ this. i got to show my line coach this. The kid right there is one of the Trinity International Chicago. You create more space. Running space. Can you do anything? You know what? It's funny. A quick snap. So the guys are down here standing and set up the top. They're just going to snap the guys up. First sound. We'll call it. First sound. Well, we get, because we do so much movement now, what we get is we get defensive linemen. They come up and they stand here like this until, until our hands go down. And so we just catch them. We come up the line here. Oh, I mean, now. First down, we know. I wish I would have showed my kids this to make it kind of fun. Because I did do that. He really worked it. Yeah, he's a clown. He's a clown. He's a great shit. Here's some of our one on one box drill, passing drill. Love this drill. And we don't, that's, that was, uh, he was a sophomore then. He's not really firing off. He's getting up in. Yeah, he's, we, we don't do that anymore. We don't no. drop stuff. That was fire. a good example of not raising the hands. Coach, you were talking yeah. about. See how immediately when the guy left, he still came right back down. Right. So you're trying to, that was a good example there. Regroup. So every time they extend, you got to get back in. Right, yeah. you got to get back. You got to release, get back in, get here, and punch through again. 
This is reload. I mean, I guess yeah, this this year was probably the first year we started doing this, so we weren't real good at it. We got a whole lot better. This is when I learned that we're not a team that drops back and takes a drop step. We have to start attacking because we're much better when we attack. We had a hard time because we were both old school of uh, using our hand, firing off and using our hands. Yeah. So because we fire on everything, and so it, it took us a while to catch on and believe we could. Door, door on time, check. Yeah, uh, right, Sacramento State. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is an encroachment film. You see the people are jumping off. Oops. <laughs> this playoffs here. Yeah. So they've, walked, they've got 10 films. We still got guys jumping. <laughs> <laughs> we played Crenshaw this year. You'll see it on the film. They jumped six times in a row. Oh. This game right here, guys, believe it or not, they they cried so much. The officials made up a rule. I've told you, I said it before in clinics. We got flagged because we jumped some more than six inches off the ground. We jumped too high in our show. I said, where is that in the rule book? And they said, I don't know, but you guys jumped too high. <laughs> I said, God, kidding me. So Coates is new to make a new tape. This one's yeah, this one's before we had our turf. Did you ever hear no, somebody no, complaining, no. well, you're simulating a snap by doing that? That's what it's a new tape. Because we shift every time. Moves. That's how we got away from it. They can argue that, but we argue right back. That, hey, we do it every time, so they should know. And then I say, we give them all our film. Why aren't they, why aren't they coaching? Mm -hmm. Some official's like, no, oh, man, talk about it. We get more complaints than this. We get more complaints um, about our being too fast and uh, being on the line of scrimmage with our wing backs. Because now more they're, they're, you're seeing guys trying to wait and you know, wait till we shift to get down so we just go on first down while they're standing up. <laughs> 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 I don't think they want a bunch of wings on the line. And double wings, see, I don't know if you'll see it here, but yeah, these guys yeah, are back, but a lot of times we really crowd the line and what it does is mm. now with the rule mm. of not being able to down block, Oh, it creates problems. Yeah, they're too Not being able to yeah. down block. It, yeah, you can't down block if you're uh, in the backfield. So you can't cut block. Cut block. Cut block. Oh, I'm sorry, cut down block. block. Cut block. Thank you. Right. And uh, no, so we're like half and half. So they can, they've got the idea of okay, they can cut down block. They've got a line up with their free block. That's it. Yeah, I think that might be. Yeah, yeah. I cut some of it out because it was real bad. Yeah, I gotta make a new one. Okay, guys, any questions at all? And then we have anything else put on coach? Was that it? You had some, uh, I didn't know if you wanted to see some game, I mean, some uh, highlight film, or if you had any questions, if they had any questions on any block. Yeah, if, if you got questions on that uh, blocking, we can go over it, whatever you want, or we can put a highlight, part of the highlight on Coach, you had talked earlier about the low and high. Okay. You said, oh, I'll be going over that a little bit. Is that, oh, is that the hand through the High, low, and low. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I think it was Luke. Hands, hands, hands on the hip. Hands on the hip. Yeah. Oh, hands on the hip. Yeah. Just punch it through. All right. Through when you said low and high. We're really thinking the illegal high. Yeah, yeah you know, we I do know. We do that. That's yeah. talking about a chop block. Yeah. Yeah. Is, there, is there something you do when you first first come out and you got a kid who's raw? Is there something you get him on one knee, or is there anything that we can? No, we work. We work on a single bag with the younger kids. I mean, put put one of our big uh, popsicle bags up in front of them. We just take it off the sled. What our what our progression what our progression is, guys. We start practice every day in spring with our linemen. We just set go. Get that six inch step. Set go. And then we come back, never go down a stance. Second part of the progression is step and pop. So set go. Set go. And then it's step, pop, and trail. Step, pop, trail, back up. And you should be right back in your normal stance. If they get it. Here, they lose all their spring. They can't trail it up. They've got to lift. So we take six. We tell them six-inch steps. It's just dead down, and we're popping every time we do that. They'll actually do that right down the field. Yeah, we march. We march up and down the field. Start them off in whole group. Spread them out, and we'll go for a hundred yards. Step, step, step. Turn around and come back. 
You stress them real quick steps. Yep. Make them all get set. The only thing they don't do is we don't make them go down the three point, but they have to get that down here. Okay. Step, pop, trail. Get the other. And when they trail up, second hand comes up. So you got both hands up. And then down blocks always with the inside foot. Down up, inside foot. You got to leave the same thing though. It's a six inch step. Got it. Six inch pop, trail. Turn your hips and trail it through. And then all your pulls are vertical. Nothing set. We don't do a conventional do, drop step. We do not. Double. We used to. Our pull for our guards or any of our players were throw the elbow, turn around, and go. Now, this is our pull. Even when we flat, even when we flat pull, then we're not going to go past the line of scrimmage with uh, screens and some other things. What we do is we tell them, don't question mark until you're already gone. Until you're cleared. Yeah, until you're cleared. And then now we'll, now we'll belly step. Okay. For, for us to get around the corner on the sweep, we don't even question mark at all anymore. We want to show run every we tell, play. We tell these guys, you better get down, okay. create the wall, clear it out for us. It's the same thing we practice. It's step, like a down block. Now we're running. We're running. That wall continues. We're pulling around, tightening that wall. We're pulling sweep. We're getting on the edge, kicking out. Where are their eyes, Dutch? Up and yeah, looking. At their pull, second step, they're looking inside the slope. Now it's back and forth. First step here, second step, clear it up. Now you're going to look inside and see if anybody's running through. Because yeah. he's got to clean up. Backside, backside, backside guard's guard got to clean up. So if anything leaks, he's got to take the leakage. Anytime anybody until, pulling. until our onside guard, get out. Get out there, get out now. Backside guard will clean up anything that gets through. And I know your wedge is a little different too. Do you want to show that? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. your, your wedge was a little different. Sure, but you we can your show that. Uh, our double, out of our double wing, when we're foot to foot, our wedge is normal. It's just like everybody else's. We're stepping down here, getting inside, and we're just squeezing it. The coach had asked me a question. When we go our splits, how are we doing our wedge? Because not, the, he's, he's up on the line. That was my concern, yeah. was that we always talk about being off the line of scrimmage. And coach, he's, he's coach, the foot. coach is the center. We're foot to foot. He thinks we're bad. We're not. I know it's hard for you to get, we're here. We're even. We want to squeeze the line of scrimmage as much as we can. And I was worried about the fit on the wedge, him being able to get behind me. And he said that I would take the step and he would stick his helmet behind yeah, here. We're right? here. If we're, if we're in our split, right. we're going to go behind, okay? We got our six inch split, we're moved, we're a single wing, okay? We're wedging his hole. We should okay. almost lift that apex. We yeah. should almost lift that guy in the we air. We almost lift him up because we got one on He's each side. Four side so we got head here, here, head here, and we're going. We're yeah. pushing and lifting. Okay, because the other conventional is, is the shoulder pad in the rib cage, yeah. right, and we're pushing like this. Right. We yeah. slide off when but, we do that. We always get the gas and we do that. Yeah. We, want yeah. we want everybody to just force that guy. Now we're now we're just going to push on more, your, more weight okay. against their weight. But he's actually, his, his head is behind the behind guy. We don't care. Yeah. In, our wedge, in our wedge, we don't care whether that guy sees anything. It shouldn't be right. see, he should be in there pushing yeah. so this guy can't get knocked off. If we do it right, say this is our center, we're zero wedging. His, he should be on his toes if they're <laughs> lifting him up so hard. He should be yeah. almost like he's dancing out there. He's going to lift him up here. Yep. Get behind him and lift him up. Him yeah. Oh, but that's grabbing. You're not allowed you to do grab. that. You can push. Oh, no. Yeah. We grab him. I'll tell you what we grab over here, and our wedge guys, the first guys hate it because we underhand it and we grab belt. Oh, oh no. That's we're out. <laughs> so he better move. Yeah, now you got one on each that, side. Man. So you're literally giving him a wedgie. Yes. <laughs> and it's, for us, it works. Um, are you uh, wedging on center all the time? Yeah. No, yeah. we'll wedge any hole. Yeah. Wow, we'll wedge any hole. I almost like Dr. Any, we'll Dr. wedge Dr. anything Ward. but our sweep. Go to the bubble. Power. We started kind of taking Dr. Ward's philosophy on that. You know what? It's easier to wedge a bubble than it is a man. So you know, we're telling our guys, it makes sense. You're going to get more push if you can get into that hole. So we're we will call that. We'll go. We'll go wedge well. bubble. Two, four, six, one, three, five. Yeah. We won't go seven and eight. Oh, we can't do anything out there. Right. But we will wedge all the way out to the tackle. Hmm. So you just form up on the guy in the hole. So if yes. the guy was a, is so, a four hole, we're gonna we're gonna so get if we're, on him. If we're gonna say okay, say we're all the way out to the six hole. So all we got is tackle and tight end. You don't get much of a wedge on the outside, but you got a hell of a wedge on the inside. You got a five man wedge on the inside. So that back's gonna start off here and slide down to that wedge point and go. And the guys on the outside are going to run by him. 
three or four. We used to have our blocking back instead of jamming him in. We were finding that he was knocking people off. So he kicks out. On so the we side. kick out off the off the edge. If they're going short side, he'll he'll always go to the short side and uh, and pick off whoever's coming around. You know how they try and come around the yeah. outside. <laughs> so show like a power look. Almost. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it looks like to the backer. And just just so you got just another thing so you guys know, we're not traditional with our huddle either. Mm -hmm. Balls, so uh, into the tables where it's spotted. We huddle up here. This is the line of scrimmage. Our center stands right with his toes on the line of scrimmage. Everybody else lines up. Our backs behind him. Quarterback goes over and talks to coach and gets the play. Steps in front, tells the play. The center goes over and puts his hand on the ball. If they don't have more than four guys over there, we're snapping the ball across to that huddle. Twelve yards, and we're off and running. And if we make the call from the sidelines, monster, monsters are call. Quarterback comes up, center goes over. Quarterback, as soon as the center gets set, you've got to make sure he's set, hand on the ball, steps in and walks through and says, Coach, coach, starts yelling. We can't run that play. As soon as he says, Coach, we, the ball snapped. And we go. Snap to our wing back. And it's a wedge hear, block. If he can't hear, we just tell him to count 1,001 yeah. snap. And basically, that's a wedge block for us. We've got. Uh, Nine man wedge going on because it's the center and the quarterback are the only one on. I see you shaking your head. Coach. I'm just hoping I got the you know what's to try that. <laughs> <laughs> that's and that's I tell him coach earlier, our center, we try to get there's one of those on that. Is there one on that? I don't think there's one on okay, that. We try to get our center when we, when I pick my lineman, our center is usually usually our smartest kid. Maybe not the strongest, best athlete, but our smartest kid. He's got seven different snaps he has to run. Regular snap here, short snap to either side to our blocking back, direct snap in the middle, fly guy running back, snapping on the run, snap across this way, snap across that way. And we teach him on our monster snap, he's here, he can't do that. He's going to backhand it. Because we do this, we get called for picking it up and throw it. So everything he does, he takes this, flips it. If we're going the other way, bam, flips it and goes. It's not too hard. It no, it's not. Every day. It's pra they, our centers do 100 snaps every day before practice. They come out, do all our shot, 25 of all our shotguns, which comes to 100, and then they do another 25 of monsters. And a good way to teach it, we don't do it anymore. I'm going to have to do it this year because our snaps were bad last year. Take a fishing dip net. Put a spike on the end of it, stick it in the ground. They have to snap into that net without knocking it over. So it's flat, it's soft, and it gets to the point. And that's really worked for us. Or you can use another easier way, folding chair. Yeah. Folding chair, set that down. They hit the back of it, it's going to tip over. So they got to be able to snap that to four and a half yards and lay it right in the seat. Yeah, the folding chair does work. I've done that. And your center's head is up, right? Yeah, we our use our center's head. He our, center, our center he peaks looks one time. Has head up. Once he sits down and looks, then his head's up. Us, like other single wing teams, they don't ask their center to do much blocking. We ask our center to do a lot of blocking because it's a double wing scheme. So we ask a lot of it. <clears throat> and I said our center is usually our smartest kid. The one year we had uh, Fabe had Junior, and every time the quarterback broke the huddle, came up, he turned around and he'd say, Shotgun, Pope? No, not shotgun, okay. He had to ask me. He could snap, snap good. Snap the hell out of the ball, but he never knew what he was going to snap. <laughs> Until the quarterback told him, Shotgun, regular, he felt his hands on him. Uh, we couldn't run direct snap to our fullback with him because he knocked him over. He had a nice touch on everything. I thank you guys. Anything else I can do? Your number's on there too, Coach. Oh. Yeah, my cell number's on there. Home phone sells the same if you want to write it down. Like I said, I've got an email address, but I don't have any idea what it is. Contact coach. Uh, if, and I'll try to get that stuff out to the coaches that asked for it about the filming on for our down blocks and everything, our individual practice. We'll get that out to you. And anything else I can do for you guys? Anything you want, guys, call us. We'll give it to you. We love trading. <laughs>